objectively good. That there really is an objective good. Now, it's like you might think of it as a kind of hybrid view, because what is objectively good depends on the desires that everyone happens to have. But the key that I want to emphasize here is that it doesn't depend on what desires we happen to have, that I happen to have. It tells me that I should not necessarily be acting on the desires that I happen to have. I should be acting to maximize the total satisfaction of desire overall. And, and notice we can ask the manager for the question. I can ask the question, well, I have certain desires. I therefore call certain ends good subjectively. Why should I care about the impartial point of view? Why should I care about maximizing overall satisfaction? Why shouldn't I just, I mean, I don't really care about the satisfaction of your desires. I care about the satisfaction of my desires. So why should I care about this impartial point of view? Well. A utilitarian is going to answer, uh, you should care about that impartial point of view because someone else has desires. Someone else cares about those ends. And you should not simply be concerned about your own. So this impartiality here is the introduction of an objective element, pulling us up, away from uh, ratcheting us up beyond our subjective values. Uh, and sometimes this shows up as a question about motivation, as I just said. So we can ask, why should I care about the satisfaction of your desires if I'm a subjectivist? Okay, so that's one point. The second point about the structure of utilitarianism is this. Um, Utilitarianism starts as more starts by identifying what is good. Uh, it constructs an account of what is objectively good, namely the maximum satisfaction of our subjective, of everyone's subjective, subjective desires. Um, but this maximization of aggregate satisfaction, maximum, maximum satisfaction of what the totality of everyone's desires is a perfectly objective end. <coughs> and is something that is required of all of us. Okay, so the point I want to emphasize here is that once the objectively good end is determined, once it's constructed out of the subjective desires that everybody has, um, then this is what's required, that we have to act to maximize that. Let me put it this way. So even if, so why, why do I keep saying that this is an objective good? Because even if none of us was motivated by it, even if each one of us was in fact motivated only by our own subjective ends, utilitarianism would say that's the correct end. That's the objective end that we all should be going for. Okay, and so the point that I want to make about this is that the structure of utilitarianism works like this. First, we identify what is good or valuable. I've been saying a few times now. I've been saying a few times now that this is constructed out of our subjective desires. But once it's constructed, it's something that we might be right or wrong about. So it's something that's objective. Nobody, so, so perhaps nobody actually has that end. Nobody actually is acting in an impartial way. Maybe we're all acting just on our own subjective ends, on our own subjective desires. Well, in that case, we're all acting wrongly. We're all acting immorally in that case. Okay, so the point is, 
that on a utilitarian view, a utilitar utilitarianism has the following structure. We first identify what's good or valuable, and then morality is concerned with maximizing that. Say that one more time. Utilitarianism starts by identifying what is good, what's objectively good, what we all are required to know, and then says that morality is a matter of maximizing that good, that goodness. So morality makes an instrumental contribution. Morality is to be understood as making an instrumental contribution toward promoting what's good, promoting as much goodness as possible. That's what, that's what the job of morality is. OK, so I'm about to tell you some attractions of utilitarianism. So these days, there are a lot of philosophers who are utilitarian. And I'm going to tell you some of the things about utilitarianism that is attractive to them. And then I'm going to tell you some criticisms of utilitarianism. Let me see if there are questions about it so far. When you said that it maximizes <clears throat> maximize their good, was it? The good, not the good. good. So it wasn't their individual good. No, absolutely not. So what utilitarianism takes to be objectively good is the aggregate total level of satisfaction of subjective desires. So, of course, it's going to be somebody or others' desires, but not necessarily any one individual. And you, in particular, you may have to sacrifice your own satisfaction of your own desires and your own good in order for there to be greater overall satisfaction based on the satisfaction of other people's desires. So your, we'll come back to this, but your, there's, there's no special connection between you and your desires. Anybody's desires make ends valuable, not just your own. You have to act on from that impartial point of view. Other questions? Yeah. So the reason why emphasizing the satisfaction of desires as opposed to maximizing the utility, it seems like a different version of utilitarianism than utilitarianism proper. Right. So there are different versions of utilitarianism. I'm in developing one from a kind of Hobbesian basis. I'll mention uh, some others later on. Right. So um, you might think of uh, the satisfaction, you might think of a way of trying to measure the degree of satisfaction of a person's desires as utility. And so then utilitarianism says what we have to do is maximize overall utility. So you need to measure how well satisfied your desires would be under this situation, under that situation, how well another person's desires would be satisfied under this, uh, add up the levels of utility and maximize and choose the situation that maximizes utility. Okay, so what's uh, attractive about utilitarianism? Well, one thing that's attractive is that um, it at least promises a clear and sharp answer to every kind of moral problem. So it says the right thing to do, the moral thing to do is whatever course of action will maximize overall utility, will maximize the overall satisfaction of subject. So even if that's hard to figure out in a particular case, right? we can't quite predict the future so well, and it's kind of hard to know, it's kind of hard to measure precisely how satisfied a person, person's desires would be. 
Well, in principle, at least, there's an answer. And it's just sort of lack of empirical knowledge, lack of our ability to predict the future, lack of psychological knowledge about how well satisfied a person will be, that is the inhibiting factor here. If we knew that, we would be able to answer the, the question. There's no deep moral in uncertainty. Second point is this. Uh, it, it, it appears, utilitarianism at least appears to be consistent with the underlying subjectivism about values that we started with. So it seems to be compatible with a modern scientific worldview in which ends are made valuable by somebody desiring them. But I said on reflection, this is um, not quite right because for utilitarianism, there is a connection to sub subjective desires, but it constructs an objective good. Um, so once the uh, once the once the subjective desires are aggregated, this um, totality is taken to be an objectively good end. And as I said before, if nobody was pursuing that end, we'd all be wrong, objectively wrong. We would be doing something incorrect. <coughs> okay, a third point uh, that's an attraction of utilitarianism is that it seems to give at least a clear answer to the question, what's the point of morality? So why is, uh, what, what's morality about? What's it concerned with? What's the point of morality? Um, and the answer according to utilitarianism is that the point of morality is to produce as much value as possible. To produce as much of what is good, namely the satisfaction of desires, as possible. So sometimes I've, I've been using satisfaction of desires. I've been using the term utility. Very often utilitarians talk about happiness <coughs> as the satisfaction of desire. So um, utilitarians say, that the point of morality is to produce as much good as possible. And good is the satisfaction of desires or utility or happiness. And, and doing anything else would, and anything else than what utilitarianism says, sorry, let me say that again. Utilitarianism says that what we're required to do is maximize what is good. So anything else, a utilitarian would say, is doing less than what's maximally good. So a utilitarian would say, if you're not a utilitarian, you're producing less good than you could. It would be what? Better for you to be a utilitarian because you would be producing more of what's valuable, namely the satisfaction. 